Hey everyone, Noah Zerby here. This is one in a series of several short videos where we'll introduce you to several of the foundational concepts in the study of international relations. These are topics that we'll come back to and make reference to regularly throughout the course. In another video, we look at the security dilemma as one of the defining features or defining problems in international relations. In this video, we consider the collective goods problem. So what are collective goods and why are they a problem? To understand collective goods, we have to understand the characteristics that define most of the things we produce and consume, namely rivalry and excludability. Rivalry refers to the degree to which one person's consumption of a good reduces someone else's ability to use or consume that same good at the same time. If my use of a good prevents or limits someone else's ability to use that good at the same time, then that good is said to be rivalrous. If it doesn't, then that good is said to be non-rivalrous. If I eat an apple, for example, no one else can eat that apple. The apple is rivalrous. If I'm driving my car from Arcata to San Francisco, someone else cannot simultaneously be driving that car from Arcata to Portland. The car is also rivalrous. Excludability refers to the degree to which it's possible to prevent someone who hasn't paid for a good from benefiting from the consumption of that good. I have keys to prevent someone from driving my car, I have a password to protect my computer, and so on. When it's not possible to prevent someone from using a good because of the characteristics of that good, it's said to be non-excludable. It's not possible, for example, to prevent someone from breathing clean air or to prevent a ship at sea from using a lighthouse, and so these are examples of non-excludable goods. Now it's possible to think of all goods as falling into four roughly distinct categories based on the characteristics of rivalry and excludability. First, we can have goods that are both rivalrous and excludable. That is, you can prevent someone who hasn't paid for the item from using it, and one person's use of the item limits or undermines someone else's ability to use that same item. These goods are usually thought of or defined as private goods and are the domain of classical economic theory. Just about everything you purchase in a store, for example, is a private good, but not all goods are rivalrous and excludable. Some things are excludable but non-rivalrous. That is, it's possible to prevent someone who hasn't paid for the good from using it, but one person's use of the good doesn't prevent someone else from using the good at the same time. Such goods are usually referred to as club goods. Satellite or cable television, movie theaters, and private parks are all examples of club goods. Sure, cable companies can prevent someone who hasn't paid for the good for the cable from using it, for example, by scrambling the signal, but one person's use of the good doesn't diminish someone else's use. Just because I'm watching cable television doesn't mean my neighbor can't also be watching cable at their house. Toll roads outside of rush hour or unfilled movie theaters fall into the same category. They are excludable and non-rivalrous. Conversely, we have goods that are rivalrous but non-excludable. Here, one person's use of a good necessarily diminishes another person's use, but it's difficult or impossible to prevent someone who hasn't paid for that good from using it. These are normally called common pool goods. The best example of a common pool good or a common pool resource are fish stocks in the ocean. Certainly one person's consumption of fish stocks, especially if we think of overfishing, will undermine someone else's ability to use the same fish stocks. You can't catch a particular fish more than once. But it's exceedingly difficult to prevent someone who isn't authorized to fish from doing so, especially when fish move between international jur jurisdictions like in the North Atlantic. And finally, we have public goods, which are both non-rivalrous and non-excludable. That is, one person's use of the good does not diminish another person's use, and it's difficult to prevent people who haven't paid for a good from benefiting from it. Examples here might include national defense or broadcast television. Historically, such goods have been provided by the state, as the market is unable or unwilling to provide public goods in sufficient quantities to meet public demand. And it's these final two categories, common pool goods and public goods, that we'll spend the most time with in this class. But for now, let's focus specifically on the collective goods problem. The collective goods problem centers on the question of how we can get two or more actors, whether it be states, individuals, whatever, how we can get two or more actors to work together towards their collective interest when doing so requires one of them to forego individual interests. How, in other words, can we prevent free riding on the effort of others? The unique nature of the global system makes traditional solutions to the collective goods problem less workable. 
At the domestic level, the state can address many of the issues that arise from the collective goods problem. Legal systems can limit or enforce access to goods, and the state can use taxes to provide public goods. Indeed, historically, this has been viewed as one of the primary responsibilities of the state. But at the international level, it's more difficult. How, for example, do we prevent nuclear proliferation, or protect the environment, or guarantee human rights, or ensure a healthy and well-fed global population? All of these questions invoke the collective goods problem at the international level. These are questions and issues that we're going to return to throughout the semester. So that concludes our introduction to the collective goods problem. Be sure to check out the other foundational videos which look at topics including states and nations, anarchy, and the levels of analysis. Thanks everyone. Have a good day. Bye.